It is my privilege to introduce our guest of honor, His Excellency Mr. Jan Lukes, Ambassador of Kingdom of Belgium in India. His Excellency started his diplomatic career in 1986. He is MA in Oriental Philosophy and Languages from Lovian University, MPhil in Philosophy from Delhi University, and a special baccalaureate in Philosophy from Lovian University. He has been the ambassador to various countries like Switzerland and Liechtenstein from September 2011 to June 2014, Poland from August 2006 to March 2010. From April 2010 to September 2011, he was the head of cabinet for the Ministry for Development Cooperation, Brussels. He was previously posted in New Delhi from 1988 to 1991 as a first secretary. I invite you on the dais, sir. Thank you very much. Namaste. Now you know everything about me. Maybe. <laughs> anyway, um, Honourable Sri Muyudin, Deputy Chairman of the OBC and Minority Fund Development Corporation, Honourable Miss Punam Ben Vel Jibai Jat XMP. Father Alfred, Father Ashok, Professor Chauhan, distinguished um, ladies and gentlemen, it's a privilege for me to participate today in the International Conference on Rural Development organized by the Xavier Institute of Development Action and Studies. Thank you for the invitation. You might wonder why the Ambassador of Belgium is a guest here today. Well, we can truly consider the different uh, Xavier Institutes in India as part of the cultural and educational heritage of Belgium in India. The first Belgian Jesuit fathers arrived in Calcutta in 1859. And in the following 100 years, more than 540 Belgian Jesuit fathers would travel from Belgium to India, leaving behind their homes and loved ones to travel to the other side of the world. We can only, can only very humbly honor their zeal and remarkable work throughout this country. Father Levens, for example, installed himself in Ranchi in 1888. Today, Ranchi has become a Jesuit educational hub with more than 25,000 students, with a printing house and a cooperative bank. It would lead me too far to underline the achievements of the different Belgian Jesuit fathers. But let me just mention Father Constant Levens and his commitment, commitment to the cause of tribal people, Father Camille Bulke, whose Hindi-English dictionary is still best-selling, and of course, Father Herman Rasgaard, who gave his life to protect his community. This Xidas Institute was founded by Father Michael van den Bogaert during his stay in India from 1951 until 2009. Father van den Bogaert was closely involved in the establishment of several Xavier Institutes, such as the Xavier Labor Relations Institute in Jamshedpur and the Xavier Institute of Management in Bhubaneswar. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as a diplomat, allow me to refer to some international developments, recent international developments related to the topic of this conference, I think, being rural development and sustainable development. More specifically, I would like to, to refer to two major international events that took place last year and that are relevant. That's to say, the Paris Climate Conference and the New York UN Social, uh, Sustainable Development Goals Summit. First of all, the Paris Conference, the 21st Conference of Parties to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, more easily said COP21 in December of last year. 195 countries adopted the first ever universal, legally binding global climate deal. And this is a historical, historic achievement. Its importance cannot be underestimated. 
The agreement, due to enter into force in 2020, sets out the global action plan to put the world on track to avoid dangerous climate change by limiting global warming well below 2%. And for this, the need for global emissions to peak as soon as possible was agreed, recognizing that this will take longer for developing countries. Moreover, rapid reductions need to take place thereafter in accordance with the best available science. Our governments have delivered in Paris. The entire world has come together to face one of the most pressing issues of our times, this climate change. And now it is time for us to take up the challenge and implement the promises of our governments in our daily work and lives. Especially also here in India, please avoid the mistakes that we in the West have made in the past and learn from them in your development process. Renewable energy, smart cities, sustainable transport and infrastructure, and waste recycling are the need of the hour on our path for the future. Only then will we be able to turn the Paris Agreement into a decisive turning point on climate change. This is our common responsibility for the future of our planet. Secondly, New York. At the United Nations Sustainable Development Summit in September, world leaders adopted the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and 17 so-called SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals, were adopted. These SDGs, they built on the Millennium Development Goals, well known, the eight anti-poverty targets that the world was committed to achieve by 2015. These targets include slashing poverty, hunger, disease, gender inequality, and access to water and sanitation. Enormous progress has been made worldwide on the MDGs by last year, even though the indignity of poverty has not been ended for all. The new SDGs and the broader sustainability agenda go much further than the MDGs, and they address the root causes of poverty and the universal need for development that works for all people. More concretely, the 17 SDGs were identified to end poverty, fight inequality and injustice, and tackle climate change by 2030. What lead us too far to explore the different SDGs, we won't have the time for that. But it's safe to say that agriculture is a common threat which is holding the SDGs together. Investing in the agricultural sector can address not only hunger and malnutrition, but also other challenges, including water and energy use. Let's take a closer look at the second sustainable development goal that concerns rural development. It reads as follows, end hunger, achieve food security and improve nutrition and promote sustainable agriculture. To fulfill this goal, a series of specific targets have been identified as well as the means of implementation. Take target 2.3 regarding productivity and incomes, and I read, by 2020, double the agriculture productivity and incomes of small-scale food producers in particular women, indigenous peoples, f uh, family farmers, pastoralists and fishers, including to secure and equal access to land, other productive resources and inputs, knowledge, financial services, markets and opportunities for value addition and non-farm employment. In fact, as you probably know, the World Bank has estimated that agricultural development is about two to three times more effective in raising incomes amongst the poorest than growth from any other sector. More than three quarters of the food we will need to produce by 2030 needs to come from increased productivity. Boosting rural incomes and ensuring ample employment means looking at the economic opportunities across the entire value chain from farmers and input suppliers to value-added processing and services such as transportation and marketing of food. The challenges are big, 
They are big for our governments because this has been subscribed by our governments. But so are the games. So, ladies and gentlemen, we can only hope that both these international commitments will be implemented seriously as to give a real boost to sustainable rural development. I thank you for your attention. Thank you, sir, for your enlightening words.